like this. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. Help me say it. Give thanks to the grateful heart. Oh. so much for joining us again for our midweek expression. I pray that you have had a wonderful holiday season thus far and you are anxiously awaiting the new year 2023. I don't know about you, but I am ecstatic. I am excited about what God is going to do during this time of uh, during this time of year. Um, but I am also ecstatic about what God is doing doing and what he is doing right now. Listen, don't shortchange what God is doing during this season. Don't shortchange what his birth has meant for you and I. I don't want you to ever shortchange the fact that the birth of Christ, it meant the hope that you and I have in our lives. And that hope is eternal. So family, I'm going to continue our thread of, 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 of thought uh, as it relates to, our, to hope uh, on tonight. I pray that you enjoyed our time of worship as well on tonight. Uh, 
So uh, come with me uh, to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Yeah, we're, we're going right on in. I'm not doing a lot of fluff on tonight. Uh, but Luke chapter 1, verse 30 through 33. And uh, and uh, it's it's a little different on tonight, so just bear with me. I'm not going to hold you long, uh, but uh, I, I just believe that God would God need you to hear this this train of thought. Amen. Luke one chapter uh, chapter one verses thirty through thirty three. It says, "Don't be afraid, Mary." The angel told her, "For I have found favor." or for you rather have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David and he will reign over Israel, watch this, forever. His kingdom will never end. Now, I need you to catch this last part. And he will reign over Israel forever. And his kingdom will never end. Will you bow with me? Father, we thank you again for your word. We thank you so much, Lord, for this season. And as always, Father, we thank you for the hope that this season brings in our lives. Now, Father, I lift up each and every voice, uh, uh, each and every individual that's under my weak voice on tonight. I pray, Father, for their homes, their health, Father, the challenges that they may be going through. Father, I lift them up right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, as only I can, that, Father, that you would move on, in the hearts of your people. Father, I pray, Father, that you would forgive us of our sin, for we have sinned and come short of your glory. Now, Lord, have your way on tonight. Please, Jesus, you move. You do as only you can, Father. And, Father, that's give us exactly what we need. Now, Father, for those that are going through grief, touch them. For those that are going through health and struggle, touch them. For those that are going through emotional turmoil, touch them. Let them realize, Father, that you said that you would never leave us, nor would you ever forsake us. And Lord, as we prepare to bring in the, the new year, I pray now in the name of Jesus that you would, Father, give us favor. Please, Father. That doesn't have to be material, financial, but peace, joy, love, connection, Wisdom, give it to us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, when all is said and done, we'll be ever so mindful to give your name glory, honor, and all of the praise. It's in Jesus' name we do pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Well, family, on tonight, I want to just use it as a train of thought. Understanding the hope that's restored because of the birth of Jesus. You know, family, oftentimes we consider the birth of Jesus from a perspective of looking back, a, a historical perspective, uh, uh, something that happened over 2,000 years ago. That's how we look at the birth of of Jesus. That's it's nothing. It's it, we 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 can we can't we can't. Feel it. We we can't imagine it as as something that happens right now. That's happening right now. But just for a moment, can you walk with me just for a moment and put yourself in the heart and in the minds of those people who were alive during that time? Just for a moment, as we say today, put yourself in their shoes. And when you do this, if you really do this, I think that it'll help you understand the reason for the hope and, 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 and for the excitement that was surrounding the birth of Jesus. See, let me, let, me, let me walk you through 
just a segment of what these folk were dealing with. At the time, Israel had a glorious past as, as a nation and, and the history of Israel. It had began with a promise to Abraham. God told him that he would make him a great nation and that he would give him land for his people who would come after him. Now, through exile and then through exodus, God eventually fulfilled this promise and he birthed a nation and he gave them their own land. The glory of Israel extended through the period of judges, but, but eventually Israel wanted a king. Yes, the kingdom was formed first with Saul and, and then with David and, and then with Solomon. And that then after Solomon, the kingdom was split into the northern kingdom, which, 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 which then had tribe, ten tribes and was known as Israel. And, and, and then the southern kingdom, which had two tribes and was known as Judah. And all during this time, there were kings in Israel, kings in Judah. However, because of their re rebellion and because of the sin, eventually the nations, all of them, went into captivity. Sin brought about issues that put all of the inhabitants into captivity. And by the time we get to the announcement of the birth of Christ, the successions of the kings had stopped. And it had been nearly 600 years there was a king, that, since, since there was a king on either side of the throne of Israel or the throne of Judah. And not only had the succession of the king stopped, but the succession of the prophets had also caused, had ceased rather as well. And it had been 400 years since there was a prophet in Israel and more than 400 years since the book of Malachi was written. It was silent. No prophets, no preaching, no word, no re revelation from God. The glory of Israel was gone. And it, it, it only remained in their memory. And by the time we get to the announcement of Jesus' birth, Israel was living under an authoritarian state that was governed by Rome. Wow. Herod was the king. He wasn't a Jew, but he was appointed by Rome. And while he was a brilliant man, he was also a ruthless and an evil ruler. And it's out of this place, family, in Israel that God tells Mary that she will give birth to Jesus and that he will be great and that he will sit on the throne of David forever. Now, if you had been in Israel and if you had heard this, think about it. How would you have reacted? How would this, the, this news of, 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 of Jesus moved you? Now I hope that you can understand why this would create such excitement. I hope that you can understand why this would have created such enthusiasm. See, in the minds of many, all that was lost was about to be restored because of the child that was about to be born. And the Bible suggests that when Jesus shows up, yes, Lord, their hopes and their expectations were lifted when Jesus showed up. Now, some of you are saying, Pastor, I hear what you're saying, but but, but now, how, how, how does all of this, how is all of this applicable to me right now? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because I, I, wanna, I, I want to lead this portion by asking the question, 
Has your hope ever been crushed by the circumstances of your life? Has your hope and your dreams ever been crushed in such a, in such a way that you felt that there was no way that you were going to ever come out of what you're in, that there was no way out, that there was no use in you going any further, that there was no way that you were going to survive this. But family can get to a point to where you stop having expectations because you start believing what's the use. Don't act like I'm by myself. And it's, but it's in these situations that you need Jesus to show up. And when he arrives on the scene, I thank God that he brings with him all the power and all of the authority in heaven with him. See, because he is with you, there is a reassurance that everything will be all right. Now, I already hear what some of you are saying. Well, Pastor, I, 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 I hear what you're saying, but and I believe that everything can work out, but my, everything didn't work out. My situation didn't change. I, Pastor, my, my, I still lost my job. Pastor, I still lost my loved one. Pastor, I still lost my home. Pastor, I still lost my, I still lost my job. Pastor, I still lost my, 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 I still got put out of my apartment. Pastor, I still got in trouble. But how many of you can testify tonight that although you lost, that although you may have co gone through some trouble, well, once you got on the other side, you have made it out better than you were when you were going through. You may not have gotten what you wanted, but you got what you needed. You got what God intended for you all along. See, one thing you need to understand, the Bible says in Romans 8, 28, all things will work out for those that love the Lord. It will work out for what? Not for the good of what you want, but it will work out for your good. The good of them who love him and are called according to his purpose. Listen, sometimes it don't work out the way we want it, but it works out for our good. And it works out for our good because he showed up. See, it doesn't just when he shows, just because he shows up, it doesn't mean that it's going to go the way that you expect. But you can be confident that the end will always be for your good. You got to remember the disciples and the followers of Jesus were expecting him to restore the nation of Israel. But Jesus had a bigger and Jesus had a better plan in mind. And the same is true for you and I. See, you got to understand we have to allow his presence to give us hope and to give us a confidence to know that he is with us and that the end that he has for us will be greater than we can ever imagine. Sometimes, family, we have to understand that because he was born, because he was born, let me say that one more time, because he was born, the text says that he will reign forever. And because he will reign forever, hello somebody, his kingdom will never end. And because he will reign forever, and because his kingdom will reign forever, that means that listen, I may not I may not understand it, but I but I know without a shadow of a doubt that he is with me forever. So what whether I'm going through good, he's with me. Whether I whether I'm going I can't understand it, he's with me. 
Whether I'm in pain, he's with me. Whether I'm got, whether I have tears flowing, he's with me. It doesn't matter. The text suggests because he was born that I have a hope that no matter what I'm going through, he is with me forever. And guess what? He's with you forever, no matter what. That's the hope that you and I have just because he was born. So family, don't just celebrate. We didn't just celebrate Christmas and give gifts. We celebrated Christmas because we were given the greatest gift. And that gift didn't stop giving on December 25th. That gift continues to give for all eternity. So let's live in the hope. The rest of 2022, let's prepare to live in the hope of 2023. And if he spared life, let's live in the hope of 2024. And if he continues to spare life, let's live life. Let's let's live in that hope in 2025. And if he continues to spare life, we're going to continue to live hope in 2026 and on and on. Why? Because he said that he reigns forever. May God bless you and may God keep you is my prayer. Will you bow with me? Father, we thank you now in the name of Jesus. And we praise you. And we humble ourselves before you because we thank you in spite of our challenges, in spite of the issues of life. Lord, we know as long as we have King Jesus, we have hope. There's hope for tomorrow. There's hope for next week. There's hope for next month. There's hope for next year. There's hope for all eternity. We thank you. Now, Lord, you touched today. I pray, Father, that this short message blesses someone. I pray it blesses everyone. Now, Lord, if there be one that don't know you in the pardon of their sin, I pray that they come to understand on tonight that because you were born, that they have hope in their lives. We thank you, we love you, and we adore and praise you. It's in Jesus' name we do pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Family, I pray that you have a wonderful evening, rest of the week. I pray that you come and celebrate the new year with us on this coming Sunday, 8.30 Sunday School, 10 o'clock our regular worship hour. If I don't see you, join us online. And guess what? Happy New Year. I will see you in 2023. Be blessed. Take care and don't ever forget. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it.